Good afternoon everyone, welcome to our small footprint. My name is Nissa and if you're new here, we are a family of eight who live off-grid in Australia. You'll have to excuse the sweaty, messy look. I've been working in the garden, uh, so I've, but I did get some notes done up to do the next voiceover for the next food prep video. So, uh, my little spiel that I start these with for anyone who's tuning in for the first time. Uh, we are, as I said, a family of eight. We live off-grid. We do our grocery shopping about every six weeks. Uh, it varies sometimes. Like in the lead up to Christmas, we're going to have a couple of four-week periods just to get the timing right before Christmas. Uh, not that we do a big thing with Christmas, but, you know, it's Christmas. And school holidays and trying to shop when school holidays and, you know, ugh. anyway. <laughs> so uh, we work from home and we homeschool and things like that. So we don't leave the property very much other than in that six weeks. Daryl does go into town to the post office and to get animal feed and uh, to do all that kind of stuff that needs doing occasionally goes into swamba takes the kids to medical appointments all that sort of stuff but in general the food that we purchase is only on those grocery shops other than some fresh milk for milk kefir um and daryl has a tendency to buy me chocolate so generally speaking the groceries that we do are every six weeks and it's everything that we use for that six weeks so when i was discussing that when i first started doing youtube everyone was interested in how i managed to make the food last the six weeks and what i did to with the food in that six weeks uh, obviously fruit and vegetables doesn't last six weeks uh, some stores okay carrots cabbages things like that but a lot of it has to be processed in such a manner that it will still be edible over the six weeks and beyond some of the food I buy in bulk for processing for long term so like I got 24 kilos of strawberries this month uh, so that got turned into a whole bunch of strawberry diff different strawberry things uh, and that sort of thing so from that point forward I started doing these videos I do one every couple of days ish depending on how busy I am and I do I all I do is I film my kitchen the whole time I'm doing all the food prep after the grocery haul and then I put it all together with and I do notes up I do a voiceover and I share with you what I'm doing with all the food and everyone really enjoys it and hey if everyone enjoys it then I'll keep on doing it so this is part four I believe of September's grocery haul there's normally somewhere between five and ten depends on what I buy in that period like some months I get set a lot of really good deals at the fruit and veg shop and so I've got excess or some months I buy some excess cuts of meat for different things or, or whatever so there's not somewhere between five and ten videos of the what goes on post the six-week grocery haul uh, and this one here is part four I believe so this is a couple of days of stuff it's a it's probably a week ago now uh, because I have been a little behind on sharing we've had it's spring so I've had a lot of garden stuff to do and things like that so I've been a little bit busy uh, but yeah so enjoy watching and I'll see you at the end Alrighty, so first up is chicken. So chicken's always something that needs dealing with fairly early on from a grocery shop because it has a fairly short best before date, uh, especially compared to pork and beef and things like that. Uh, so I generally like to cook it before I freeze it. I've said it before, but I find it e much easier to reheat cooked chicken than to remember to get it out to defrost and then cook it up because fast defrosting chicken changes the texture of it and stuff so I much prefer to have it marinated and cooked and frozen and then when I want to use it all I have to do is pull it out I can put it in a bit of warm water and fry it up in a pan and it tastes exactly the same as how it was when it was fresh uh, rather than trying to quick defrost raw chicken or remember to pull it out the night before I do freeze some bits and pieces for use like chicken legs I'll freeze as is and generally speaking that's a planned meal so I'll pull the bag out the day before for the next meal dinner's meal I do marinate some chicken to fry up to have with lemon chung uh, it's a, like a garlic soy marinated chicken uh, and sometimes I do freeze some filleted breasts for like faux KFC chicken and things like that but generally speaking I cook it and freeze it because I find that simpler so I had three or four trays of chicken thighs that needed dealing with. We'd eaten some prior to this, but this is what was left from this haul. Uh, now they're close to their best before date, so they need to be dealt with. Uh, we store it in the bottom of the new fridge and it stays lovely and cold. I still try and make sure to get it cooked up before the best before, but we do make a judgment call based on smell and that sort of thing. Uh, so... I like to slice it up into smallish chunks. Being thighs, it doesn't dry out even when you've 
got it in the smaller chunks but it just makes it a bit quicker to cook up a bit quicker to defrost a bit easier to handle and it makes it go a little bit further for certain things so like if we're defrosting some to use with uh, flatbreads for lunch with coleslaw and stuff like that the smaller pieces you tend to go go further than if you've got the larger chunks i that's what I, my experience anyway so i sliced it all up and got it in some bowls I used my standard marinade and I really do need to put up measurements for this. I have at some point, I think, because I sat there and weighed out what I used per weight of meat and things like that. But generally speaking, I just do it off the cuff as I'm going in. So I use cowboy candy. It gives that, that sticky sweet flavor with the heat kick, uh, plenty of smoked paprika, uh, garlic powder, onion powder, pepper and salt, a glug of olive oil, and generally some lemon juice or something as well. Then I just massage it through until it's all well coated and ready to be cooked. Uh, depending on timeline, it might go in the fridge marinated for a couple of hours before I cook it up. Sometimes I do it just before I cook it. It really just depends on what's going on in that day as to what I'm dealing with with the chicken. That particular day, we cooked it straight after I marinated it. So Daryl and I stood in the kitchen, we caught up on whatever it was that we needed, chatted while we were doing it, and cooked it all off in batches. Uh, so we just sat there. You don't want to overcrowd the pan when you're grilling it, because if you do that, then it's going to stew rather than grill, fry. Uh, so we want it to fry off. We don't want too much juices, juices in the pan, because otherwise you're not going to get that sticky, tacky exterior, which is really nice. Uh, so you want to do it in smaller batches in the pan. So we just... We just uh, get both pans going and we fry it off in rotation. Once it's all fried out, we put it in containers to cool and then it goes in the fridge. So one of the other benefits of cooking the chicken is that it means I've got another couple of days before I have to really do anything with it. Uh, so it can now sit in the fridge and be eaten from the fridge for the next couple of days before it goes in the freezer. You just need to be aware that when you do, when you freeze it, you need to be aware that it was cooked and left in the fridge for a couple of days before it was frozen. But we generally pull stuff out uh, just the night before for breakfast or lunch the next day or when we're going to use it. It doesn't sit around. For any span of time uh, but you do need to be aware that if you've cooked it it's sat in the fridge for a couple of days and then you've frozen it you don't want to sit it to sit for much longer after you defrost it again we generally uh, freeze it in meal style sizes too so it's all eaten in one go so we generally freeze it in about 600 gram lots which works well for uh, flatbreads for lunch or in a ramen dish or in a pasta dish or things or however we want to use it so about 600 grams is generally enough to feed us all if the chicken isn't the focus of the meal which generally this chicken isn't generally this chicken is just a flavor of the meal it's not the main part it's not like we serve this chicken up with veg and gravy or anything this is normally something gets thrown in something into pastas into ramens into flatbreads or into a frittata or that kind of a thing The capsicums that I had put in the smoker the other day, I'd put in the dehydrator to finish drying out so that I could grind them up. So when I put them in the smoker, I showed it the other day, uh, they were burning too much on the outside edges rather than smoking evenly through. Uh, so I either need to kick the temperature down in the smoker or I'm not real sure how I would fix that, but it was an experimentation anyway. Uh, maybe I have been looking at trying to figure out a smoker where I've got the firebox at a distance from the smoking unit. Uh, Diane Sampson did one using an old fridge, which was pretty cool. So I might experiment with that later, but for the moment I just have my dual fuel, fuel smoker and it was running just a bit too hot for the capsicum. So the bits around the edge were burning, but burning to the point that they were just charcoal. So they were unusable. So I discarded any bits that were those really burnt, dried out charcoal, uh, but kept some of the ones that just had dark colour on them because we want that, that smoky flavour as well. Uh, I tried grinding it up with the Tribest Blender first, the little, it's like a little ninja type thing, thinking that small would be good because we, it wasn't a huge amount of product, but it was leaving large chunks of the capsicums in there, it wasn't grinding it up very well so I decided to try the Thermix. The reason I hadn't done it initially was because the Thermomix doesn't always like to grind stuff if you don't have a decent amount in there because it'll toss it around the large bowl without actually hitting the blades but this was plenty and it worked perfectly so it went in there and it ground up into a lovely fine powder. Now I ground it all up put it in a jar. Now it definitely smells different to paprika which is sort of what I was trying to see was if it was smoked capsicum smoked bell peppers or you know capsicums would come to anything like a uh, smoked paprika I am trying to grow some paprika peppers this year but uh, I, I go through a lot of 
paprika anyone who watches knows that so I probably couldn't grow enough to grind enough for myself for a year anyway but it would be kind of nice to have some of my own so the idea was to try this and see what the flavor of this was it definitely has a bit of a different smell to uh, paprika bought paprika but I'm going to give it a go on a few things anyway it's worth giving a, a shot the other chicken I had left to process was a couple of packs of breasts now I don't buy many of the breast trays because I much prefer thighs for most things but there are some things that breast meat just seems to work better for one of those things is the buttermilk chicken that I've been making I've only made it a couple of times so far but everyone really enjoys it uh, so because I wanted to get this chicken cooked up and I didn't want to freeze any raw uh, and we all loved the buttermilk chicken and the ability to pull it out of the freezer and whack it straight in the barbecue which is my oven I did the whole two trays up in it it's one of those things I sometimes miss having in the freezer you know like pre-crumbed chicken tenders that you buy in the, at the grocery store uh, that you can just throw in the oven when the kids were all really tiny and we lived in the city I used to throw them in the air fryer so we had like two air fryers two family size air fryers and you could throw potatoes in one chicken tenders in the other and serve up chicken tenders and potatoes and veggies and things like that uh, so it is something that's a convenience that is kind of nice and so what I've done with the buttered milk chicken before was that I cooked it all up fried it all off and then flash for it put it in the freezer on a tray flash froze it and then put it in bags and then when I wanted to have it for another meal I just spread it out on a rack on a tray in the barbecue and it cooked up perfectly so this is basically my version of chicken tenders which is really handy to have I do have to have freezer space for it though it does take up a fair bit of room so I put a, a liter of the milk kefir into a bowl which is my alternative to buttermilk I we have milk kefir it's a similar sort of a flavor so that's what I use I seasoned it with salt and pepper, smoked paprika, garlic and onion, and then I cut the chicken breasts up into smaller, into similar size strips and put it in the kefir mix. I sort of I filleted the breasts in half first and then cut them into strips. Sometimes breasts can be quite tough, so by doing this and marinating it, it should keep them nice and tender. Uh, but this, that is the downfall of breast meat sometimes, is that it can be quite... Uh, tough like this I, I could have pounded it out and that would have alleviated that potential as well but uh, that was that would have been a lot of extra work <laughs> once it was all into the bowl of kefir I covered the bowl well the the chickens covered well and then I covered the bowl and I stuck it in the coldest spot of the fridge overnight and then the next day I will cook it up I started off the next day by making some slider rolls. This was a day that Daryl and Surreal were in Brisbane for Comic-Con, so it was just the younger five and me at home. So it was a good, easy dinner. Uh, I also noticed here that I had forgotten that the kids had given me some texture tattoos. <laughs> so you'll have to try and ignore the colorful lines of who knows what on my arm. Some of it looks like a tic-tac-toe, to be honest. I think I was trying to get work done and they were harassing me. So I was just letting them give me texture tattoos while I was trying to get some admin done. <laughs> So because I hadn't planned ahead of time, I did some sourdough cider rolls, but I also added some instant yeast so I could make sure that they were done the same day. I threw everything into the thermix and used it to knead the dough, knowing that the quantity of dough would be fairly low, being that it was just for the younger five and me, put it in a bowl and left it to proof. So I don't always use the thermix to knead my dough just because it doesn't have the capacity to do the quantity that I do, but if I'm just doing a small batch of flatbread dough or a small batch of burger dough or thing like that then there's plenty of room in there it can it can handle around about up to about a kilo of flour but that's sort of pushing it so it depends on the dough that you're using as to how much you want to do that I also mixed up a batch of flatbread dough after I'd mixed up the dough for the slider rolls uh, to use for lunch. Again, I used some of my starter, but I also used yeast. The starter was quite thin. It had been left out on the bench. It should have been refrigerated, and it needed using anyway so that I could refeed it. Uh, so it will just add to the texture of the flatbreads, but it needs the yeast in there as well for the style of flatbread or naan style that we tend to make. Yeasted flatbreads are something I fall back on a lot in summer. It can take only take 15 to 30 minutes for a yeasted flatbread dough to proof and become lovely and pliable. Of course, we do make tortillas sometimes which have no yeast in them at all, uh, but the flatbread style with the yeast in it is well received as well, and it's nice to have variations. So I got that mixed up and put it aside as well. While it was proofing, I had the zucchini from the hamper that needed something done with them. I'd actually forgotten they were there, so there was some 
bad spots on them so they needed something done with them so I just quickly used the Thermomix grater attachment to get them all graded up to go in the freezer this attachment has been fantastic because uh, my hands just do not like using a box grater and you can just stick it straight in the bowl of the Thermomix but it doesn't end up in those big shreds it ends up kind of minced which is fine for certain things but for other things it's nice to have those big shreds so by using the cutter we get the nice big shreds so all I did was Sonnet and I grated all the zucchini that was there just stuck it all straight through the uh, KitchenAid grater attachment and I'll put it in the freezer there was some Ziploc bags that came in the hamper some lower quality ones which were fine for zucchini because if it gets a bit of freezer burn it's not going to matter it's just it's going to go into food anyway I use frozen, frozen zucchini in a lot of things, like in soups and pastas uh, and in stocks. It's a great filler once frozen. The texture isn't as nice, but it works perfectly fine in things that you're going to cook for a while uh, and let it break down even further. So it was worth getting it shredded in the bags and in the freezer before it went bad. The texture is not great for things that I like chunks of zucchini in. You're not going to be able to use it for that, but you can use it for, I use it for zucchini bread sometimes. Uh, it's great in bolognese, in, um, as I said, in soups. When I make lasagna soup, I tend to use the frozen zucchini in the lasagna soup, all that sort of thing. So there's plenty of uses for it uh, once it's in the freezer. After that was done, I tidied up and started on the flatbreads. I just pinched off golf ball sized chunks and rolled them into balls, put them on the mat. Putting aside the rest of the flatbread dough for another use, it can go in the fridge and be used over the next couple of days. After a couple of days, the texture of it gets a little bit too lax to really do anything with, but you've got a couple of days that you can use it straight out of the fridge just to make flatbreads whenever you want. I rolled out the flatbreads and fried them off. I don't do anything fancy with these. I don't worry about being round. I just roll them to sort of a uniform thickness and then cook them off in the cast iron. I don't appear to have any footage of serving them, but I would have served them with the chicken thighs from the day before, some lettuce or baby spinach, depending on what I had, uh, sliced tomato, mayo, all that kind of stuff. Just a chicken and salad on flatbreads for lunch. Once the slider dough had doubled, I tipped it out to shape. I weighed them out to just over 70 gram balls because uh, that would give me a good, the, it gave me 12, I think, uh, and shaped them nice and tight into balls for their final proof, lining them all up nicely in the baking tray for that. So uh, rolled them like, a, like you roll any sort of bread rolls or anything like that, nice tight skin over the top so that when they proof again, they're proofing within that skin. Uh, because it's a yeasted roll, I didn't score them at all. I just let them go it's a it was a slightly enriched yeasted roll so it doesn't need to be scored or anything like that it'll be a very soft bun a bit like a brioche bun once the buns had doubled again in the tray i gave them a bit of an egg wash that just makes them color up nicely when they're cooking there's no real other reason for that and then sprinkled sesame seeds the egg wash does help the sesame seeds stick i really like sesame seeds on my buns uh there's a lot of kids and daryl don't but they can always pick them off if they don't want them because i really like them so i put sesame seeds on all the buns that i do after that I had to get the chicken cooked. Now the plan was to cook all of the chicken up all at once so it was done and then could go in the freezer for meals later on the month as I had said. Which is, it was a lot of chicken. <laughs> it was like four and a half kilos, five kilos worth of chicken to be cooked up. But that's, you know, I just got in there and got it all done. And it'll be worth it later on when I want to cook it up on another day because I'll be able to just pull it straight out of the freezer. So I seasoned some flour with paprika, onion, garlic, salt and pepper, similar to the spices that I used in the kiva mix, and then dredged the chicken in it. I didn't wipe off the chicken too much. I discovered the first time I made this after doing some research, where some people sort of said they add some of the buttermilk mixture into the flour. Uh, but if I just didn't wipe it off or if I just let it drip, didn't let it drip too much before sticking it into the flour, it sort of built up a bit of texture in the flour by doing that. And it meant that I wasn't over wetting the flour right from the word go. Uh, so by just allowing there to be some drippy liquid on the chicken it gave it that flaky texture on the outside of the chicken and it worked quite well i don't know obviously this is me working on googling stuff so you know buttermilk chicken my way <laughs> uh, i don't and the spices and stuff there was a lot of variations on it there was so many different ways that people did it that i just had to pick what i wanted to do and how i felt like it would taste good for us and i went with that 
I fried it off in some cold pressed vegetable oil. This is just the cold pressed vegetable oil from Costco. I have no idea really which oil is the best oil to use here, but this one is a good frying oil for various things. Uh, I tend to strain it and reuse it a couple of times if I can, if I haven't burnt too much into it and it's not too dirty. Uh, and it just, and then I discard it sort of, I might buy a bottle every shopping trip and then I use it and then I discard it as needed depending on what I've used it for. Uh, it seems to work quite well. I fried it off in the pan, taking care not to overcrowd the pan. I probably could have used a bigger pan, but then I would have needed more oil. So, you know, that was a bit of a trade-off. I hadn't didn't really decide what to do there. Uh, I just cooked it until it was the right color. It was cooked in the middle. The first lot of chicken never has those big flaky bits of crumb that we're going for because of the whole needing to build up some of that buttermilk. It's a little like how the first pancakes you make are either too dark or, or too uh, blonde or uh, until you get it fixed. Like, you know, you, I, I generally burn the first color pancakes or I try and turn them too early and they go to mush. So it's a bit like that. The first lot of chicken that's going in isn't going to be the best out of all of them. Uh, towards the middle is the best and then the oil gets a bit dirtier and the end ones aren't as great. But you know, that's just, that's just the way it is. So I just slogged on and cooked it all off. I just cooked the whole lot of the chicken off in batches in the oil and stuck it all on racks over trays so that it could drip the oil off. This is what the slider rolls looked like when they were cooked. Lovely and soft, perfect size, great texture. These were just really simple rolls. I'm pretty sure they just had some oil in it. I'll see if I can find the recipe for them and share it. But um, it was just based on my normal brioche roll, but it had added yeast on it. So I didn't put eggs in it because I didn't want, I don't know, I'll find the notes <laughs> and I'll try and remember to share it. Uh, this is what the sliders look like. We serve them with some baby spinach, some mayo, the smoky barbecue sauce that I got from Costco, which is really nice, by the way. That was worth buying. I really enjoyed that one, though I should just make my own. I had some cheese on mine as well. I really should have done a salad or something to go with them, but I didn't. <laughs> so this is what dinner was, was just sliders with that buttermilk chicken and a bit of salad on them. And that was what we did. And this is a large portion of the chicken after it was all cooked up to be dealt with and once it cooled there was another rack full of that as well. So I ended up with a large amount of chicken uh, frozen. I think uh, possibly in the next video I might have recorded myself bagging it all up ready to go in the freezer and I think I've got a couple of bags full, a couple of meals worth so that was really nice uh, and that would be about right because if you're having chicken as a main meal as I said like if we're doing the the grilled thighs as a meal I only do 600 grams because we don't need to use it like if it's only part of a meal it doesn't need to be um, like much but when you're having something like buttermilk chicken you tend to use a bit more of it because you're doing it with veggies or, or whatever else so you tend to use a bit more so if there was like four and a half kilos of chicken it should be three or four meals worth of chicken uh, you know around about depending on how it's eating uh, with those slider rolls we probably ate less than if we would if we were serving it on a plate um, but I'll have to assess how as I go how many meals we get out of it and then make that judgment call for next time so as I said I really like the idea of having those you know the pre-cooked chicken tenders basically in my freezer I really have missed having something simple like that and you could even do them up for lunch to have with sandwiches or something or just a quick meal so I'm going to assess how many meals we got out of that and maybe it's something that I need to do in bulk though we just don't have a whole lot of freezer room. I do look forward to getting to a point where we can buy one of the like the hybrid fridge that we've got is a hybrid fridge freezer it's a 500 litres and it's amazing and it would be really nice to have a one that's a fridge and one that's a freezer. I think that would solve a lot of our storage problems but it was like $800 so that's going to be a while off especially with everything else that needs to get done. So thank you for joining me again today and I will see you guys on the next video.